Let me ask you, do, do you, do you have the Holy Spirit? And are you truly full of the Spirit? I don't want to ask you if you speak in tongues, but do you really have the Holy Spirit and are you full of the Spirit? The reason I ask that, because I did a teaching today here in Mexico where I am at our Lutheran school. And uh, I was te teaching about the Holy Spirit and, and I want people know me, they know I believe in this gift of speaking tongues and that is a sign of accomplished those who are full of the Spirit. And, and we see that in the Bible. We see in Acts 8 when Philip came to Samaria and he was preached and people repented and got baptized, but they have not yet received the Holy Spirit first. When the apostles came, they laid hands on them and they received. And there was a clear sign that people received the Holy Spirit. We see in Acts 10 with Peter and the house Cornelius. The people was, Peter was surprised that the, the the gospel, let's say like that, for, for repentance to life was given to the Gentiles and that they have received the Holy Spirit. And how did he know that they received the Holy Spirit? They suddenly start to speak in tongues and prophesy. Jesus, uh, and, and he used that in Acts 11 in front of the, the elders in Jerusalem when they're like, what are you, Peter, doing in the house of the Gentiles and Peter explained what happened, how they spoke in tongues. And he was like, whoa, so God had granted repentance to the Gentiles. I, I believe in speaking tongues. Acts 16, uh, 16, Paul came to Ephesus. He believed, asked that you received the Holy Spirit when you believe and those believers had not. And, and he explained the gospel more and he laid hands on them after they got baptized and they received the Holy Spirit and they started speaking tongues and, and worship God. And I believe in that. I believe in that. We believe in that. Why? Because it's in the Bible and, and, and we believe it's for everyone. But, 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 but. When I did a teaching today, I, I started with the Holy Spirit from the beginning on. Or also looked at the Holy Spirit in, in the Old Testament. I wrote, a, read a verse about how somebody said, the Holy Spirit said, come upon you and you shall be a different person. And this is what happened when the Holy Spirit come upon somebody, they become a different person. Who was it talking about there? It was Saul in the Old Testament, Samuel and Saul. What we see was Saul and David and all of them, they were full of the Spirit. They got filled by the Spirit. They, let's say like that, the Spirit came upon them. They experienced how the Spirit came upon them. There was a few people through history who experienced how the Spirit came upon them. They got vision. They start to prophesy like Saul. When, when you read the Holy Spirit, say, come upon you and you shall prophesy and you should be a different person. And Paul experienced that. You know, Saul experienced that. But what changed with Christ was is for all flesh, sons and daughters, old men and young men, slave and free. Men and women, all of them, like there was told by the prophet Joel and what Peter said in Acts 2, all men. And what do we now? Repent and be baptized and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit is for all of you. And I believe in that. I believe in speaking tongues. I believe in that. Why is biblical and we see it? But I just need to question many of those who speak in tongues and there's two things there one some of them don't understand that they need to continue being full of the spirit and they are not they maybe at one time received the spirit and at one time spoke in tongues and experienced the holy spirit they can still speak in tongues but they are not continue full of the spirit or second they've never been full in the first place and the tongues they have is false why do I ask questions about that? Because the science is missing. And there I'm thinking of, of so many other signs than speaking in tongues. Like Stephen, he was a man full of the spirit of wisdom. Stephen spoke with wisdom. The, the early apostles who had been with Christ, they were unlearned, uneducated men. But people was amazed when they saw the lame man staying beside them and they were amazed the way they spoke what was that what we have we give to you as peter said wisdom 
power. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall receive power to become my witness. Power and witness. Witness is martyr. Peter, before Pentecost, he said, before the day is over, the rooster crowed two times, you have denied me three times. Peter said, no, I will never deny you. And the rest said the same. So go, Peter, go, Peter, go, Peter. The confession was the right place. He confessed. He said, I will never deny you. He had the words in his mouth. But when he came to it, he denied Christ. And what you saw there was, it was a servant woman, young servant woman who said, you are with, you are one of those. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are with those guys. Your language uh, exposed you. No, no, I'm not. And, and he started to curse and use the strongest language ever. Like, I don't know that. I swear I don't know that guy. He denied Peter. Uh, Peter denied Jesus. But what do we see after Pentecost? We see a totally different Peter. In Acts 2, Peter was in front of Caiaphas, Annas, the high priest family. He was in front of them. Those people, not a servant woman, girl this time, who had no authority and power to do anything. He was in front of Caiaphas, Annas, and those who had the power to get Peter arrested and whipped and crucified and all of it because they did it with Jesus a short time before and they will now do it with Peter. But there, there was just a boldness upon Peter. They were just like, listen, Israel and all of you, I want to proclaim to you today that this lame man, and this man is healed because of Jesus Christ who you crucified. And he was just proclaiming the gospel with boldness. He was not afraid to become a martyr even. Why? Because he had received the Holy Spirit. Yeah, they got a little intimidated, but later in Acts, they prayed again for, for power to, to see miracle and boldness to preach the gospel. And the Holy Spirit came and filled them up again, and they went out and continued the good work. So we see a wisdom, we see a power, we see a boldness. But we also see a, a fruit of the Spirit, love, peace, joy, forbearance, kindness, goodness. Fruit of the Spirit. We also see in Book of Acts, when the apostles talk, like Acts, we read about like, Acts 15, for example, when, when they would send Silas and them out with the letters, they're like, or oh, take out Barnabas and Paul on a mission trip. We read, like, the Holy Spirit and we have decided. Or, it seems good to the Holy Spirit. Or, the Holy Spirit said to them, take Paul and Barnabas and send out. Where do we hear that talk today? Like, it seems good to the Holy Spirit and me, us. Or, the Holy Spirit said... The Holy Spirit was really a part of the early church, part of the first disciples. And it was not just a group of people who came together and, and spoke in tongues, even we believe in tongues. There was so much more than followed the life of the Holy Spirit. And we are called to continue being full of the Spirit. And the more, when, when I look into this life of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit do, I just need to question many people who say they are full of the Spirit or have received the Spirit because where is the signs, the fruit, fruit that they have the Spirit? Yes, as I said in the beginning, many people probably has at one time, but then the they are not continue being full of the Spirit, as Ephesians 5, 18 is saying. Don't get drunk in wine, but be full of the Spirit. So I just want to say this. I was doing a teaching today, and it was really, really good. I loved it. And I was sharing a lot of testimony of, of the, the life with the Holy Spirit and vision, uh, healing, but, but also the present, present of the Holy Spirit and the reality of the Holy Spirit in my life. And, and how it should be for all of us. I just want to share this. And I want to encourage you. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. The Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today and forever. The time Jesus came on earth. He was here in front of the religious people. But they rejected him. They said, oh, we don't want him. We serve God. Now Jesus is heaven, in heaven beside God's right hand. And now it's the Holy Spirit who's down here. And now people say... 
<laughs> no, Holy Spirit, we don't want you. We, we serve Jesus. They don't want that person who are here. It's easy to have somebody who's further away. The, now the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ. And he is here to remind of every word Jesus has spoken. And he's not here to be worshipped. God is to be worshipped. But he's here to remind us and, and, and ho help us to be holy and live a holy and righteous life. But he's real. And he wants to be part of our life. He wants to be part of your life. And I actually gave up at one time three, four hours teaching just about the Holy Spirit. I put it in in a link with this video. And, and if you want more, I really encourage you to see those hours of teaching I did about the Holy Spirit. We're also speaking about speaking tongues because there is where the difference is. I will end up with this. I still remember April 95. I was 18 years old. I was a boy who was very rejected. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I have never read a book in my life. I had a speaking mistake. I have no self-confidence. I have no plan with my life. And then one day I stepped into the church. I went up to a prayer meeting. I did not know what it was about. Somebody, it was about the Holy Spirit. Somebody laid hands on me and a light came. The Holy Spirit came into my body and I fall to the floor and I met God. I went into that church timid, full of fear, afraid, had no plan with my life. And I came out of this church, hallelujah, come on, nothing is impossible. And that guy who couldn't read and couldn't write, I'm actually giving up my, my eight, nine book here in a few weeks. I actually ju just this morning got the, the front page and the back cover of the book and I'm, I'm, the back text is really good. I'll share it later. Um, I put a picture in here, actually. Here you can see it. You can pause it if you want to read it. So, um, yeah, I'm just saying that no matter where you stand in life as a Christian, if you feel you are powerless, if you feel you lack wisdom, if you feel you need, lack truth and understanding, if you feel you have no boldness, if you feel that, that you have no fruit of the Spirit, you feel something, be full of the Spirit. Don't try to live it in own strength because that is impossible. Spend time with God in worship, in prayer, and, and focus on God and sing psalms and, and let the Spirit fill you up by praying and focus on Him. God bless you. That's what I want to share today. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.